you know, while I've got all that junk torn off the front of the engine, uh, there's never a better time to replace your spark plugs. If you, uh, if you didn't take apart your engine, uh, change your spark plugs, um, you can take off, this is the passenger side wheel, um, and you can actually get to those two spark plugs pretty easily through this side. Uh, the other side doesn't look so easy because um, the engine actually isn't in the center. It's slightly to the right side when you're sitting in the passenger seat, or when you're sitting in the car. Um, the engine's slightly to the right, so it's not actually in the center of the vehicle. Um, so the spark plugs on this side are tucked in there a lot farther than they're on the passenger side. See, uh, there's the wheel well. You'd have to reach through all that junk to get to the spark plugs. On this side, it's just past that bracket, and then you can reach the spark plugs. Spark plug way back there. Um, see, I'm, I'm wondering, like, you know, how, 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 how do you how do you get to that thing? It's way back there, you know, hidden. I mean, you can you, you can see this one. It's, it's so far hidden back there. Um, I had a, a light bulb moment, but I did. I don't know if I can recommend it, but I, I just changed the hardest spark plug to get to to the easiest spark plug to get to. I just chopped the hole, um, if, if you decide to do this. Um, not that I can recommend it. I mean, I don't know what it does structurally to your vehicle. Um, but uh, don't, don't, don't cut a hole you know, using anything that'll throw any sparks. You know, because you don't want to catch your car putting on fire, catch your car on fire. Um, I used a sawzall. You know, that cuts nicely, it doesn't, doesn't create any sparks as you're cutting. At least it shouldn't, let's get a really dull blade. But uh, yeah, then you should be, should be able to replace this spark plug nice and easy. So yeah, this, this one in here that I chopped the hole in, um, this one went from being the hardest one to replace to all you gotta do, you can reach right through there, put a ratchet on it, crank her out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I can give you some explanation to uh, spark plugs that I'm using here. Um, the one on the right, that's that's a new uh, new Motorcraft spark plug uh, that I bought off Rock Auto for, you know, e each of these was 350 each. These are uh, Motorcraft Final Wear Platinum. Um, if, you're, if you're getting spark plugs, especially on a vehicle like this where they're, they're a pain to change, uh, just, just, just pay the extra couple bucks and get, uh, get, get good spark plugs. Um, don't buy the, the first things you can get. Um, yeah, Motorcraft Platinum, or uh, Iridium, I think, is the best. Yeah, okay. Uh, these are Motorcraft Fine Wire Plugs, which means the uh, the center electrode there, you know, it's a small, it's a fine wire, uh, which means that it should be able to, you know, fire uh, at a lower voltage, so it'll it'll spark easier, you know, even in, you know, even in the cold, or if you've got a, you know, weak coil, or whatever. Um, so it should, should help your car run better. The old spark plugs I'm taking out of here, right now this car has about 110,000 miles on it. Um, that gap is huge. That center electrode is basically gone. If you look at that, um, that gap I would say is like double what what it's supposed to be, which is probably why why this thing's been starting so hard. See, the, the gap is supposed to be uh, 0.4, not 0.04, uh, 0.040 to 0.0 0.045, um, and I'd say that other gap is. <laughs> like 0.08. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, when, when, when you get these spark plugs, uh, they're not they're not gapped. They're pre-gapped. Um, you've got to gap these spark plugs before you use them. Um, and to find to find the spark plug gap, uh, you just pop your hood, and there's a sticker right under the hood there that'll tell you the gap that you need. Yep, 0.042 to 0.046. Okay, this is in the uh, starboard wheel well. Uh, look at the spark plugs through there. Uh, I'm actually going to reach in from the top to change these spark plugs, but the, the camera's here just so you can, so you can see it better. Um, the spark plugs have actually been coming out really easily, um, which uh, stuff that I've read on the internet, I guess they most people have them come out really hard. Uh, hopefully it's not a bad sign that they're coming out easy, but uh, they come out pretty easily. Uh, they're supposed to be torqued, to, I've read 10 to 15, 15 to 20, I'm gonna do 15, so right in the middle, 15 foot-pounds, um, which I, 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 I would say that's what they're torqued to currently. Um, that's what I what I feel like, you know, taking them out, that's probably what they were torqued to when they were put in there, is around 15, so that's what I'm gonna do, uh, putting these back in. All right. Okay. 
popped loose uh, and they spin out pretty easily. I turn it out a little bit, turn it back in, turn it out just a little. Um, and then I'm gonna take the air gun and spray around in there to, you know, blow that rust out of there. Uh, cause first, the first spark plug I replaced had a bunch of rust, a bunch of rust around the spark plug, um, around the spark plug hole. So you know you don't want any of that to fall in there or gum up threads. So I'm gonna take a blow gun, blow that out, and then take the spark plug out and put the new spark plug in. Just so I can start uh, cutting with the sawzall. I'm gonna drill some holes in here and then cut out from that. So after I chopped the hole in there, um, it's difficult, but I managed to wiggle the socket onto it with the universal jointy thing. Okay, just snug. Screw this one up. Before we screw it out. Okay. Uh, these are coming out just fine the and they're supposed to be getting coated threads. So I'm not going to worry about putting any C's on it. Um, you know, I'm just going to install it clean, dry threads. Uh, just, just, like, just like I've read uh, on Motorcraft's website. Okay, holding that piece back in, um, I used wires. I just kind of poked it through, ran it through, poked it through the other way, um, you know, and I bent it so that it's gonna it's gonna hold it. It's gonna hold it from keep it from going, you know, in any further, because um, you you want that fiberglass back in there. You don't just want to push this back closed, because uh, you know that's right next to your exhaust manifold. Um, you know, and you know a lot of heat's gonna come through there. I don't know how hot that piece could get, but you know, it could catch your carpeting on fire. You know. So yeah, this this is just a uh, part of a roll of uh, two by four insulation. Yeah, um, for regular wall. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna st stuff some of that insulation in around where that fiberglass mat that goes around the engine is to help seal that up and keep keep all the heat. Because fiber fiberglass pretty much the only thing you know that's going to uh, that's gonna insulate and protect from heat uh, from transferring that heat over. Know, from from the exhaust manifold from the engine through to the inside of you know, the metal of your car uh, you want you want to keep as much of that heat in the engine as possible after packing the edges and then try and shut that as far as possible <laughs> oops okay actually one one more thing uh, to hold this door closed all I did was drill two holes in here and uh, run a wire through there twist it tight that should. Hold it pretty much closed. Uh, I'm gonna fire it up. Well, once I get my water water pump cover back on, um, I'm gonna fire it up. Uh, I'm gonna leave the carpeting down and you know take it for a test drive. Uh, make sure that this doesn't get too hot. Not that it transfers through the wires or something. Um, but uh, yeah, if that that stays cool, if that stays um, doesn't get too warm, then uh, yeah, put the carpeting back and call it good.